I'm going to talk about the Internet of Things as actually being something, not an idea, but actually something that functions, and it's functioning today. Um, I'm going to take you through what actually does exist and what actually does happen, rather than thinking about what we might do with it. Um, just a few figures for you. Increase in population, population growth up to 2050. Half the world's population lives in a city, an increase of 30% from 50 years ago. We're moving back. Cities are being populated, repopulated, urbanization-related drivers, efficiency, engagement of residents, sustainability, the availability of connectivity. This has all got to do with urbanization, and that's what drives the demand for smart cities. There currently are about seven completely smart cities in the world. Um, most of them are in the Far East, but you would, you would expect that. Um, but from our point of view, what does, what, does, what does it mean to us as people? How, can, how does it affect us? Um, Richard made the point, yeah, in lighting, we don't know what to do with it. Um, I'd slightly disagree. From the, from the external lighting point of view, we have done stuff with it. Um, what we have is efficient municipal government governance. We're looking at social security, emergency responses, utilities management, norm and planning, all to be linked together. High quality public services, public transportation, education, healthcare, and government services, meaning hospitals and things like that. Currently, the hospital system doesn't talk to the police system because they were developed separately. What we do have, though, and I don't know if you've noticed it creeping into the modern world, is you now have bus shelters that tell you when the buses are coming. You kind of take that for granted. I remember when I started taking buses in Belfast, you pretty much guessed. You went, has there been a bus along here in the last 10 minutes? So that's IoT. That's connectivity from the bus to the shelters to the system that allow them then to monitor where the buses are. Do we need to send more buses out? Has a bus broke down? In general, smart cities bring comprehensive change. But the standalone business cases by themselves are generally compelling. And then sustainability of economic development, industrial parks, tourism, logistics, and agriculture will all be connected. We'll all have the ability to interoperate in the environment. And that's the important part to remember, interoperability. So street lighting is where it started. Funnily enough, every city has street lights. Every city had to update their street lights whenever LED came. This caused a thought process that if we integrated platforms and IoT platforms uh, into street lighting, it means that we would build the mesh based on something that already exists. So street light municipalities energy bill. The municipalities municipalities energy bill is, 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 is created heavily by a lot of what happens in the area and in cities it's street light and street lighting costs a lot of money. It costs a lot of money. Massive number of assets and just as high maintenance costs. Again, it's not two men in the ladder where street lights are concerned, it's three people in a van, which is even more costly. And the problem with that is you do spot, you do, yeah, that one's out. We've got to replace it. It's not very efficient. It's not an efficient way to look at things. And one for all light configuration compromises customer satisfaction. If anybody lives in a private street where the street light is outside their house, it's a right pain. It's a right pain because you have no say when it comes on and you have no say the level at which it comes on to. So smart street line provide a flexibility and reduced energy bills and maintenance costs. Absolutely has. And I was in a place called the Danish Outdoor Living Lab, the Doll Lab, um, where they have um, created, um, in Copenhagen, they've created areas with different uh, types of lighting. And they also have incorporated IoT. So I stood in the middle of a dual, no, I won't say that. Yeah, well, I stood in the middle of a dual carriageway and had 150 meg download speed. And you're going, why is that good? If you're ever trying to get any information while your car's moving, if you've got kids, there's a lot of reasons why also interoperability will allow your car to talk to other things. 
So smart street lighting enables intelligence on and off switching mechanisms according to fixed time, solar calendars or environmental conditions. Wow, that'd be amazing. Imagine if the street light was on at 40% because from a security point of view, it's nice to look down and see who's coming. But until somebody walks down there, then the street lights don't come on. Big saving. Also, that PIR cell. Surely you've seen the street lights that are on during the day. That's because there's muck over the cell and it's not working properly. That costs you money because you pay the bill. Also, the energy consumption uh, uh, of street lighting um, with LED has, has obviously reduced because of what LED is, but then it has changed the world. Uh, Rome has had a big problem recently. I don't know if anybody's been to Rome, sat outside in the little cafes on the side of the street, lovely soft sand, sandstone buildings, nice warm light, lovely warm light. No, some boy in the council went, no, we're changing it all to LED and we're gonna put 4,000 Kelvin up. So you're now in a bright, stark environment where everybody's shocked by how bright things are, and also the soft sandstone looks sick. So they're in the process of changing it back again. But as Richard said, just because you can doesn't mean you should. And real-time fault detection. It means you can detect a fault from a street light as it happens. It means you don't need routine inspections. Fault notification informs the operating center where the fault is, so the, the engineers, Richard rightfully said, can have the stuff with him before he goes. It makes sense, does it not? Yeah. And then finally, this sort of thing happens. Now this is in America, but the broken street light was cited by the judge in the suit where a woman got killed. The judge clearly said, had the street light been working, the woman wouldn't have died. So that's a big thing. Real-time monitor and flexible lighting configurations maximize satisfaction and security. So there's the deal with street lighting. Absolutely clear. Works really, really well. Have we adopted it in the UK yet? Uh, we're, we're afraid of change. We really don't like to. Ooh, we fear change. Um, so anyway... Uh, how else can we use IoT as part of, uh, of what we do in the outside world? Parking. If you put anybody hands up, who lives in London? Uh, I don't. Yay, I don't. Um, average time to find a parking space in an average city, not London. <laughs> 15 minutes. Traffic. <laughs> 15 minutes to find a parking space. How long to find a parking space in London if you don't know what you're doing? What do you add? Go on, tell me. 40 minutes? Can you look for a car parking space for 40 minutes? Anyway, traffic warden, I've got a friend that's a traffic warden. It's really funny. He is costly and not very efficient, I can tell you. So traffic wardens are not really good at what they do. And the human element can allow you then, I'm not on the yellow line, you are. That kind of thing. Imagine if the system was there that if you parked on the yellow lines, you got the ticket. That's it. You know the rules. And then parking can cause congestion and accidents. I've seen parking cause accidents. I've seen people come from two ways, one person reversing out, and they both try and get in. It causes problems. So parking's a big issue. Parking can be helped by integration with an IoT system that allows your car. Imagine if you're driving along going, how many car parking spaces are available in my vicinity? Bing, on the dash of your car, there it is, go to it. Perfect. Smart parking makes a greener and less congested city. It does. Beyond reasonable doubt. Um, a particular uh, uh, favourite of mine, Disney. Who's been to Disney in Florida? Who's been to Disney in Paris? It's the same gig. Try and find a car parking space. There's lots of dudes wearing uh, high fez orange and, and uh, uh, fluorescent pink jackets who point do that and you drive around this massive car park and you're looking for a space which is fantastic but now Disney have installed an IOT car parking system which means that the supersized outdoor car parking is equipped with sensors car find feature helps people easily locate their vehicle at the end of the day <laughs> you 
go and find in the Iran shirt with Seth Rogen? Nah, I'm sure it was Seth Rogen. What are you driving? Black BMW. Yeah, you're not going to find that. <laughs> so this actually goes, tells you where your car is. It's great. Saves time. Easy extension to support premium services such as reserve parking. You, for an extra few bucks, like Disney likes to do in their add-ons, you can have a reserve car parking space that's got your name on, on, your, on your app. That is your car parking space. Less staff required. Utility rates and revenue down by tw- or up by 25%. 25% more people parking because it's easier to do. And time consumption down 75%. You know what Disney are like? They're all about numbers. They're all about getting people in and out. And this facilitates in their massive car park. It facilitates ease of use. We, we, we could use that, couldn't we? Do we want to adopt this kind of technology? Too late. It's happening all around you. The people that go, no, IoT means people can tell where I am. Anybody got a Tesco club card, a Sainsbury's club card, any one of those types of cards, they can tell where you shop, when you shop, and what you buy. Anybody that's got Facebook, we use Facebook. Facebook is now sending you detailed adverts that suit you. I get watches and shoes. In three to five years' time, when 4K starts coming into televisions, you will have targeted advertising. The adverts will consist of advertising thrown at you or as in the Disney Channel and all the other cartoon channels, at your children. It's already happening. You can't not let it happen. You can not use Facebook and you can digitally not give yourself a footprint. It's difficult to do these days. But it is happening. So what do we have to do? How does it come about? Well, currently we're looking at smart energy. There's a smarter grid usage. We're looking at uh, uh, gas distribution management. It's already happening. Shared connectivity. Uh, Smart mobility. Traffic management systems are already in place where they know where your car is. They can tell where your car is already. They just don't want you to know they can. But they can. Televisions, up until recently, Samsung didn't tell you that they can watch you through your own camera on your TV. They didn't tell you that until somebody found out that they could watch them. Anyway, smart televisions. Smart televisions. It's already there. Smart water systems. Public services. Public safety. Cameras around the cities in the UK. For them or against them. Like them or not. Let's show of hands. Who likes safety cameras in public areas and cities? Good. Who doesn't? Okay, the people that don't, don't want to be tracked. I don't want anybody to know where I am until you lose a son, a daughter, a mother, a child. Then you absolutely want to know where they are. True? So you're talking about facial recognition. Facial recognition in the UK doesn't exist. Cameras you see at the airport with the little with the little lights going round and round and round. Facial rec cameras. China's currently the only country that has facial recognition on every road. Every road. But if it's your security, then do you mind them knowing? Plus, what are you doing that you don't want somebody to know where you are? That's the other question. Smart buildings, we're already getting there. We as light manufacturers are always being bombarded. As Roger said, we want Bluetooth. We want smarter buildings. It's now coming to a point where buildings will have a smartness rating. How smart are you? And then obviously smart data. It's a big thing. We keep losing bits of it though. It's really funny. You'll get a big company going, yeah, we've been hacked. Regularly, the country gets hacked. We have hackers trying to get into all our systems on a regular basis. They just don't tell you about it. It's increasingly difficult to hack anything now. But smart collaboration means we need plan and design, we need implementation, and we need op- operation and optimization, business models and financing. We need us to realize that this is going to help. 
And when you talk about artificial intelligence, the next version, AI, whenever 5G comes, everything will talk to everything anyway because you're going to buy into it. Anybody still got a 2G phone? Analog 2G? No. No, we don't. We move on. And that's the adoption of how this works is what Richard cleverly said was, we need to find out what we want it to do. Clearly, we can get it to do things that will help us. And that's the important thing to remember. So how do we get about it? How do we build a smart city? One, we build ICT infrastructure. ICT, an anachronism for information, communications, and technology. It's concerned with storage, data retrieval, manipulation, transmission. When you talk about next generation, when you talk about artificial intelligence, I had a presentation recently from a guy said, in the next three to five years, artificial intelligence will replace 30% of our mundane tasks, which will allow humans to do what they're good at, which is be creative. Machines can't create. They only do what they're told. They've tried to make them create, and they can't think. Sentient computers or movies. Doesn't happen at the minute. But it may. So uh, how does that work in our real world? AI, artificial intelligence. Um, Zaha Hadid Architects, heard of them? Yeah, they have a, a, a few people in their AI, AI department. And what you do is you go to them with the floor plan of your business. You tell them the demographic, the age and stuff um, of the people there. You tell them what they're doing and they plug all this in this AI program. And the AI, AI program will tell you where in the space to put your desks, what shape and kind of desks you need, and who should sit where for the environment to be optimized. If you want your environment to be optimized, it tells you how to do that. Why? Because it plays out every single scenario. You can't do that. You can't do that without artificial intelligence. So we need to build the infrastructure first. We need to look at town planning, security, energy, infrastructure, sanitation. We need everything to be up to date. Then we create the industry applications, electronic traffic management, such as in Singapore, the Bay Area Smart Corridor. They're already finding that this is really useful for major traffic management. Rush hour in London's nothing to rush hour in the Bay Area. Metropolitan Subway in Seoul, which manages what trains do, where it manages the tracks. And you're all going, yeah, that's, that's really frightening. All somebody has to do is hack in, in the middle of that. Very difficult to do. Very difficult to do. And finally, integration and innovation. You need all these things to have integration into society and we need to innovate. And what that will bring is, it's more about open environments, new business models, value networks, inter-partner SLAs and flexibility. IoT is much, is, is much, much more than just connected devices. The same way Bluetooth is much, much more than your phone talking to your car. Yet that's how we view the world. We like simplicity. It is the next technology revolution. It absolutely is. The level of connectivity, the level of, level of interoperability with the amount of people we currently have on our planet has to change. It'll change the way you connect with the world. Anybody that has worked with millennials or anybody that has children of that generation will understand that their view of technology is much more fluid. My son, we went to a restaurant recently and he said to the lady waiting on us, what's your uh, Wi-Fi password? And she goes, we haven't got Wi-Fi. And he said, dad, we can't eat here. Because the, his world comes through his device, his connectivity with his friends. My friends were a snotty nose guy next door and a kid two doors down. His friends are in Germany, upstate New York. The level of connectivity is incredible. In the long term, the network effects of IoT will win. Interaction with public services will be mobile phone based. You can and will connect with the public service realm via your phone. Crowd will trump infrastructure. We will say what it should do. 
CCD, traffic monitoring versus mobile phone tracking. Traffic monitoring, flow monitoring, control the cars, where they go and where they're going, and parking sensors and CCTV based solutions, and more. All the other things that have yet to be thought of, but will be part of this next revolution. And Lightning has definitely got a big part to play in it. Thank you.